It was one of the biggest games of this year's college football season, and it happened at Autzen in Eugene. Everyone's been happy and in a good mood. Uh, obviously, we got both teams set up here, and everyone's rooting for both sides. Who's going to win back there? Ah, oh, no, nope, sorry. Oh! They coming in red, but they leave in blue, because that's how we do. Ducks versus Buckeyes. KGW News coming to you right as the game wraps up. And thanks for joining us on this special edition of KGW News. I'm John Adams. Huge game Huge. between Oregon and Ohio State. We just watched it wrap up. What a finish to the game. We have this big screen, what we call the nine panel. We're both watching it, get, you know, going basically they're exchanging touchdown after touchdown, some field goals versus field goals over the last six, seven minutes of the game. And probably one of the most exciting finishes at Austin. And yeah, the highlights are going to be incredible to see. But looking at the forecast, if you were down at Austin or anywhere outside today, we saw some incredible conditions. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Absolutely. And we're going to go now to Art Edwards. Art, what an amazing game. Great plays in the matchup tonight. Boy, I tell you what, that is one of the best college football games I have ever seen in my life. What a great day of college football in Eugene, Oregon. The Oregon-Ohio State matchup, it had a little bit of everything, and it lived up to its billing. Perfect day at Austin Stadium for that massive matchup of two top five teams. Four lead changes in the first half alone. Oregon took the lead late in the first half. Dylan Gabriel connects with Tez Johnson for 48 yards right there for the score. Oregon up 22-21 at the half, but you know what? It didn't stop there because in the second half, it was just as wild. More lead changes early in the fourth quarter. Dylan Gabriel with a huge play, kept the ball, went 27 yards for the score, 29-28 Oregon. But they weren't done then. Ohio State was able to get a field goal to take the lead. Then Atticus Sappington nailed a 19-yarder to put Oregon on top. Ohio State, though, still had a minute 47 left on the clock to try to get themselves into field goal position. They moved the ball some, but then the Oregon defense came up with the big play. Will Howard, he ran for it, slid, time ran out as he did that. The defense held. Oregon wins it 32-31, the final score. Second game this season that Attica Sappington has kicked the game-winning field goal. Epic win for the Oregon Ducks. We're going to have more on the game a little bit later, including a live report from Orlando Sanchez. Boy, what a football game. <laughs> what a game, Art. That is right. Thank you, Art Edwards. And transitioning now to weather, uh, I was down in Eugene yesterday. Beautiful down there. Beautiful tonight for the game. You can see a live look over Portland tonight. Beautiful here as well. Perfect football weather. Let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Uh, it, you know, it's been fantastic outside. You know, not just for today, but pretty much every weekend so far this October, we've seen beautiful conditions. And we saw that last weekend, and we're seeing it this weekend. And, and it's going to continue heading into Sunday. As we take a peek from our Wells Fargo Tower camera, we're looking at a temperature of 65 degrees with some clear skies. Those clear skies will carry over into the overnight hours, but because of not much cloud cover, we will be seeing some patchy areas of fog develop at times throughout the coast and into the valley. Currently, we're looking at readings in the upper 50s to low 60s out there along Highway 26 toward the coast. Temperatures are in the mid 50s along the beaches right now, right around the upper 50s to low 60s up and down the Oregon coastline. So gorgeous fall weather continues into Sunday, staying sunny and warm for Sunday. But I am tracking a more typical fall weather forecast that really starts to arrive by Monday afternoon and really throughout much of next week. Currently, though, we do have some watches and warnings. It's that air quality alert that's really been kind of popping up over the last couple of months throughout parts of Lynn and Lane County and over into Bend and Redmond. So tomorrow morning we'll wake up to areas of fog. Temperatures is in the low 50s by midday. 58 degrees on our way to a high of 76 degrees. I'll talk more about the changes and what that means for the valley, but especially what it means through the Oregon Cascades by later part of next week. That Detailed forecast is coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Joe, we'll see you later in the show. I still not believe in that he is really gone because everybody did genuinely care about Liam. Students at a Vancouver area high school are grieving after a student athlete passed away in his sleep earlier this week. Our Sydney Dorner spoke with his teammates hours before they honored his life at their football game this afternoon. William Sloan, also known as Liam, was a junior here at Skyview High School in Vancouver. His friends say he was much more than a lineman, but a phenomenal student, hard worker, 
and a loyal friend. Football players at Skyview High said they've had their fair share of ups and downs so far this season, always uplifted by William Sloan, a key part of their offensive line. He'd always show excitement, big smile. I'd go throw a touchdown, I'd go give everybody high fives, and he'd come up and just give me a big hug. This week, they lost their brother, William, who they called Liam. It was definitely surreal, just caught us all off guard. Coaches announced Friday on social media he had died in his sleep, possibly from natural causes, despite seeming perfectly normal at practice the day before he passed. Just like seemed like every other day, um, he was performing pretty well. Devastating Aiden Cedarstrom, who was a family friend to Liam and his right hand man on the field. It felt like a bad dream or something like that. And I remember showing it to my dad, and he just like he just stood there. And he sat there in silence for a long time. Around 200 people from the Vancouver community showed up to pay respect to Sloan's young life with a candlelight vigil Friday. Teammates say they're going to play even harder in his memory. The intensity that he put in on an everyday basis and hopefully that pushes our team to perform better throughout the year. Honoring his life at the Saturday game while also mourning his death. And now a moment of silence. It won't ever feel the same. It won't ever feel right. It just like feels like we're going to miss the heart and soul of our football team, man. Sydney Dorner, KGW News. Well, an update to a shooting investigation in North Portland. Police say a man who was shot earlier this month died after five days in the hospital. Around 545 on Friday, October the 4th, officers were called to a crash at Northeast MLK and Columbia Boulevard. There, they say 38-year-old Anthony Bell had been shot while in his car. Bell died in the hospital on Wednesday. The suspect or suspects left before police got to the scene. New tonight, Portland police continue to investigate a shooting that left two people hurt. Those victims called 911 just after 9 last night after their car was shot along Northeast 66th and Tillamook. They were taken to the hospital and are expected to survive. So far, no arrests have been made. And police in Vancouver want you to keep an eye out for this man who they say allegedly shouted racial slurs at someone punched them in the face and then ran away. The department says they know who the man is, but so far have not been able to find him. It's one of Portland's more recent annual events, and it was inspired by climate change. Earlier today at Glenfair Park, the city's urban forestry team held its annual Arbor Day celebration. Arbor Day is typically observed in April, but since 2018, the city's been holding this event in October. It says Portland's hot, dry summers have made it difficult for trees planted in April to survive. Doing it now helps ensure they'll grow to expand the city's canopy cover where it's needed most, like Glenfair Park. We're planting 10 trees here. Um, a diverse collection of trees as well to bring some uh, greater shade and uh, environmental and public health services to this neighborhood. After the community tree planting, they held a celebration which included music, food, games, even rides in their bucket trucks. Through the end of the year, the city is also giving away free trees for your yard. You can find details on our website, kgw.com. Another celebration today in eastern Multnomah County. The Corbett Fire Department opened its doors to the public as it celebrated 75 years of serving the community. For its birthday gift, the department unveiled its new water tender, which it received through a grant by the state fire marshal's office. It was previously used earlier in the year to respond to some of the larger wildfires in Oregon. It's been all over. Um, the state this summer and we're happy to have it. It not only makes a difference here locally, uh, it makes a difference with having those strategically placed around the state. So um, I, we couldn't be happier with it. And of course, it isn't a birthday celebration without a hamburger cookout, firehouse chili and birthday cake. We have a traffic alert for you tonight. Within the last hour, road crews were scheduled to start more paving work on the Morrison Bridge. Tonight through about 6 tomorrow morning, there will be occasional lane and ramp closures that will cause traffic delays. So you'll want to consider taking a different bridge across the Willamette if you're heading anywhere overnight.